Hi everybody, it's Bertie here, the Recycled Hippie Chick. I am getting ready to go to a friend's house, my friend Terrell. I go clean her house every two weeks. I'm her slave friend. She has me come wait on her like her little maid. No, I'm just kidding. Hi Terrell, if you're watching. She doesn't. My slacker friend. Anyway. She's the one that took me up to uh, Missouri to see the Lyme doctor. And I wanted to make her a card and take it to her today and to say thank you. I found her this great huge, I don't know if you guys have heard of Hypertufa pots where they mix cement and perlite and all that good jazz together. And they make pot flower pots and stuff out of them and they're very lightweight. Well, I found one when I was in Missouri visiting my friend Tracy, and it was, I, my ver I would say it's a hypertufa version, but instead of the perlite and everything that's in it, they mix shredded, they mix pulverized paper, like you would make homemade paper, but they mix that with the Portland cement. And it's very lightweight, and it's great huge, and it's really a pink color terracotta and Terrell's favorite color is pink so I thought that would be the perfect gift to get her to say thank you well then I wanted to get an old you know already made card so that I could um, decoupage and stuff on it and I ran across this one and the front is just already Terrell so I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna do all my fun stuff on the inside so I thought I would bring you guys along with me. So, I went ahead and picked out a few little things I could collage on here for her. I went and got some tea to tea dye a piece of lined papers so that I could cut it out and say, you know, my thank yous on it. And of course, if I had smeller vision, you guys would smell that I totally burnt it in the toaster oven. But, uh, but Terrell loves me anyway. I know she won't mind if I go ahead and use it. So I'm just going to cut me a square of this so that I can put it on here and collage around it. And that'll be the part that I... That'll be the part that I write on. My little sentiment. I'll put that over here. And I thought this was adorable. Terrell has her art, well, it used to be her art room. Now it's her guest bedroom. She has all, this looks like it could have come out of Terrell's house. So I thought that was adorable and it reminded me of her. So I'm going to collage that on there somewhere. And I found these cute little butterflies and just some odds and ends. So let's get cracking. This one here was already inked, so I thought, score. Now, if I can just get this stuff placed without covering up the prettiness of the picture, I think I'm gonna have to, um, you know what, just put it over the crack. No, because then if I put it over the crack, it might kinda tear up when she opens it. So I'll go ahead and trim it off a little bit. Okay, here we go. Let's get with it. I gotta find my mo my uh, Mod Podge. Because I ran out of matte gel medium yesterday and I'm sorry if I am yelling. I hope I'm not. I don't have my hearing aids in this morning and my husband always tells me Oh, it's already got something on it. Okay, we'll just use that. My husband always tells me I'm yelling when I don't have my hearing aids in. So, I'm going to try not to yell at you. I'm going to try to be aware of that. I, um, I bought a roll. I was at a garage sale. It was our citywide garage sale the other day. And so I went to see if I could find anything, and I really couldn't. It was a waste of gas to drive in there. 
which was fine because I really didn't want to spend any money. So I basically spent the change out of my ashtray and I found this roll of old wallpaper. It's the cloth kind, not the new vinyl kind, but not cloth, it was paper. It's just printed paper, old wallpaper with trains and stuff on it. So I bought that and when I rolled it out to look at it, it was very, it's very, you know, brittle. Like when you fold it to make a page out of it, it cracks. So I thought what I'm gonna do is tea dye some, my husband brings me those great big desk calendars, you know, that are great huge. And um, I thought I would glue one of those on the back to give them stability, but yet still be able to have the prettiness of the um, what's the word? See, I lose those words. Prettiness of the wallpaper. It comes to me, just takes a while. Speaking of symptoms, I do want to let you guys know that it's official. I got my test results back from the Lyme doctor and he tested me for 18 strains of uh, tick-borne illness and I tested positive for four of those strains. So. I do have Lyme, and now um, whenever my lab, whenever I'm able to get my labs, I'll be able to get started on my regimen. So, honestly, praise God, because if that came back negative and saying that I don't have anything, I really didn't know what I was going to do um, mentally, because that would mean that you know, I have mental issues and that there was nothing wrong with me and that I need help. <laughs> so, praise God that there's actually something wrong and I'm not mental illness. I am mental illness because I did test high in the um, neurological part of the Lyme. And so it does affect my brain, but but we're going to take care of that. Something that can be handled, I, I think. I, I have faith that it can. I don't, sometimes I just don't like going over the picture with my Mod Podge, but I guess to put stuff around it, I have to. I'm going to try to leave this free of Mod Podge because, oh my gosh, did you guys see that? Can you see that? No, I, I am so terrible about dipping my paintbrush in my coffee. I almost did, but I caught myself. Ah, I got to move it. Anyway, I'm out of matte gel medium. I used it all yesterday. And so therefore I am out and I think I'm going to, I don't know. The last two times I've ordered it online, I have not liked it. I just got a cheap brand. I did not like it. So I think I'll probably go back to the Golden. It seems to be the one that does me the best. You know what? It may not be Golden. It may be Liquitex. I don't know. It's in a white jar like that. I can't imagine me buying golden because I just don't. I get the cheapest of whatever's there and I believe it's probably the Liquitex. I don't know if I wanna do, yes, I do wanna do the matte gel because, um, because it holds down things like this. Magazines that are a little thicker that don't really wanna hold very well for you. 
so I, I probably will. I was thinking about, I saw somebody the other day just squirting it out and using it, but that would be basically like Mod Podge in a squirt jar, right? So I don't think I'm going to do that. Gosh, I keep wanting to dip it in that darn coffee. Keep wanting to do it. I'm just bound and determined to dip it in there. Okay. I'm a little, I got my nose a little out of whack this morning because, well, shoot, I just kind of like that. I might just stop there. Because I got my nose a little out of whack because I have already, I, I mean, it's what? I don't even know what time it is. And I've already got bug spray on. Because just to go outside and hang my clothes on the line. I have to put DEET on. We are so inundated with skeeters here. That you just, they, they just want to carry you off. I, I couldn't even do my clothesline. And, and not just normal. Not just normal bug spray here. It's got to be, darn it. I don't, I want to be able to write on it. And I'm afraid if I put this over it, that I won't be able to write on it. I don't know. Anyway, it not just normal bug spray works. You have to have the 40% DEET to keep them even halfway away from you. So I don't like to bug up because just to hang out clothes because you know I gotta go clean Terrell's house and I gotta run to the grocery store and it's gonna be you know all day deet so I got my nose out of whack because I got mad and put some on so I could get the clothes hung and now I'm bugged up okay trying to collage around this without it looking I'm you know it takes it takes a gift to collage without just making it look like you just glued a bunch of stuff on there it really does and and I really don't have that gift I try because I love doing it but I really don't have it but I'm enjoying it and I wish I could sit here all day and do it because, you know, my other lady that I was burning daylight the other day because I didn't want to go clean her house. That's what I'm doing again. Oh, let's make her a card, you know, because <laughs> I don't want to go and it'll take longer. But I don't have to be there till 10. So, I, I mean, can I, can you believe I think I'm done? See, now I hate to paint over that. I got some paint and gesso to go over this and tone it down and all that stuff. But I just like that. And here I grab the paint to do it anyway. Because that's what everybody does. Why can I not just do what I like? Why is that? That I feel like I have to go ahead. This is part of my therapy, you guys. I should just be stopping and saying, Amy, you enjoy, I don't even have a rag. You enjoy doing this. So why are you going on and stop myself? And I'm not. I'm going ahead and following the crowd. We'll work on it next time. Because it really is not. You know, I'm not really good at it. I need to get confidence, too. That's something else I need to work on in my art therapy. Is I need to get confidence in myself. And see the beauty in what I'm doing. I'm about to sneeze. I'm just warning you. Maybe not. Maybe that was a false alarm. 
Okay, I need. I feel like I need to dry brush this, and that was not the correct brush to do that. Where's my wipe off the book? Thank you, Arlene, for my wipe off the book that you started and didn't finish. I don't want to cover up my cute little girls. Anyway, I'm being quiet. Isn't that crazy? Oh, I wanted to tell you guys. So, when I was telling you, my husband gives me those desktop planners, and, and I was, I took some outside to coffee dye them, tea dye them, whatever, it was actually both coffee and tea mixed in the can, and, uh, and I dyed them, and then I, I mixed up some rusting, my husband has this trailer out there that he has a, old welder on and the trailer has this huge sheet of metal on it as the floor and it's all rusty and I saw that and I thought oh my gosh I'm gonna spray some rusting solution on that to get that rust wet and lay my papers on top of it and then spray the coffee dye on top to get like a double whammy effect and so I did that now, you know what? If I don't like this, I won't give it to her. We'll just keep it for myself. Anyway, I did it. I did that concept, and I laid my papers on there so they could be drying yesterday. And uh, forgot about them. And so this morning, when I was feeding the goats, I saw them over there under the trailer. They had fallen off over the night was under the trailer and I went over to get them and they were absolutely covered with roly polies and the roly polies what on that paper attracted the roly polies I don't know but they were eating it so I have these minute adorable little holes all over in the paper where the roly polies were eating it. Nature was at work overnight making art on my papers for me. <laughs> so I had these really cool grungy papers with little holes all over them because the roly polies helped me out. Maybe I should cross them over. I, I don't know. I'm going to end up covering up those poor dolls. Okay. I'm just going to stop because I have some pink here I was going to put on too. And I'll ink the edges and maybe put some splatters on it. So there's always a way to pull out of it. You know, how many times do I start on here and not enjoy what I'm doing and have to work through the ugly and it works out? Right? Right? Stamp and stencil. Pull this together, Amy. You got this. You got this, girl. Keep going, birdie. Pull the birdie out this morning. Get some pink splatters going on here. Yeah, right over your writing space and in your coffee and everywhere. That's the way to do it. I should have done that later, but I dipped it in the pink and it was real watery, so I decided to go ahead and do it now because it was just too juicy to, to waste. Just one little area here that's bothering me. Okay, 
and it's over here. But if I try to wipe that off because I don't have matte gel on it, it's going to be bad news. So I'm going to leave it and embrace the splatter on that writing area. I got my good, my good shirt on, my good house cleaning shirt. <laughs> and I don't really want paint on it. Okay. Now, let's see here. I'm going to push pause and um, dry it. Okay. Well, I went, I went over and found some stamps that I thought we would stamp on here. I know these don't go together, but this is very Terrell and this is very me. I, you know, I collect my turtles. I don't know if I've told you guys, but, and Terrell, this is very Terrell. I tore the hope off down here because it, my turtle was going to stand on it. So I do need to get something else to put over that because, because it's bothering me. So I'll just get another little paper. Okay, to put over that. Now, I've got to get a rag. And I have a dog sitting right under me because, you know, he's a tick on my butt and he has, he hears me talking and thinks I'm just corresponding with him because he's obsessed with me. And I'm, I appreciate that he loves me, but he is just underfoot all the time. Right, Cooper? And I don't want to say his name because then he'll be all up in my business wanting me to talk to him, pay attention to him. Okay, now, I'm going to have to dry that because I can't stamp over that. Um, what else? Okay, I think the rest of this is going to be stamping, I think is what I decided. So, where's my... I was hoping, I know somewhere in all those stamps I have a thank you stamp and I could not find it. So, maybe that will dry while I'm stamping everything else. Okay, now, this is terrible. I want to tell you guys, part of my therapy going on right now whatever's wrong with me, I've noticed that it makes me, first of all, I have no tears. My tears are gone. I noticed that when I first got bit, that my empathy, my empathy is there. Ugh. My empathy is there, but, but I don't show it with my, with my tears. My dad and my mom both passed away, have both passed away during this time, you know, in the past five years since I got bit. And I did not cry for either one of them. I felt terrible and I missed them greatly, but I had no tears that come out of my eyes. Now, I'm, it's like, I'm losing all empathy for people. I have great empathy for animals and this probably has nothing to do with the bite. This is just how I'm becoming probably in my older age. I don't know. But I have great empathy. Today I was out spraying. I had some aphid spray because I have a big plant in the front yard that it's actually a weed. And it gets the most beautiful um, blue flowers on it every year. So... I was out there spraying some aphid spray on it because it, it had aphids. And I'm out there spraying away, trying to save my blooms. And then I notice that I have sprayed in the area where there's a locust. And I love locusts. I love everything, nature. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked I was killing aphids honestly, but I love the blooms, so I didn't want them to go to 
to go to pot because of the aphids. I felt absolutely horrible that I had sprayed over, I don't know if I got it on him or not, in the vicinity of the locust. Now, things can happen to people nowadays, and I don't, I don't care. Isn't that terrible? I don't care about the people like I would if it was an animal. And that is terrible. And I can't believe I'm telling the whole world this. The whole world. My five people that watch me. Where is my... I think I need one of those clear, uh, clear plastic blocks. Here's one. But what the heck? I mean, I'm getting to where I think... Well, people are just stupid. They can figure things out on their own. If they're dumb enough to do that, then they're just, you know, dumb. That's how I'm getting with people. And the animals, I have great feelings for. Wow, that's cute. I like that. It kind of looks like it's hooked together. Let's see if it looks the same over here. Do, do you guys ever feel terrible like that, like I do, towards people? I mean, I have to voice it, right? Because there might be somebody else that feels that way, that thinks, oh my gosh, I'm the only one. No, hello, Birdie, Birdie does it too. You know, that's how I feel like I need to speak these things so that other people can know they're not alone. Now, this will not stick anymore. Is there a secret to making these? Well, it does a little bit. Is there a secret to making these stick again? Does anybody know? Don't tell me, well, you're supposed to clean them every time. Oh, I, I don't have time for that. I do, but I just don't care to clean them every time. Oh, that's cute. Cute, cute, cute. See, we're pulling this together. See how depressed I was in the beginning, and now we're pulling this bad boy together. Okay, I was going to put my turtle over there. And I was going to put a little butterfly somewhere. I saw this butterfly in this one. These are those ones that I got from that lady who was done with her sale and she gave me all the rest that was left. Thank you, Dana. If you're watching, I don't think she watches me or even knows I have a channel. But, uh, yeah. Praise the Lord, because I don't... And why do they stick on here so dang bad? Do you guys ever have this problem? She manitty. And honestly, this is the first time I've ever really used this block like this, this much. So I'm going to put a butterfly over here because I have them over here. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get the turtle on there. Did I tell you, did I tell you guys about my baby turtle? Oh, see, I don't know. Do I tell you again? The whole story and then you go oh my god she's already told us this or do i i don't know if i told you about my baby turtle i have one called baby i'm going to tell you again good grief who knows who knows it may be a different version this time and it'll be a whole new story to you i have a baby i had a baby turtle yes it's got a sad ending Outside under my husband's truck every morning, he always had to watch for Baby Turtle because when he left in the mornings, because she always liked to hang out under his truck. Well, one morning he found her, and he had at some point accidentally whacked the top of her shell off with the lawnmower. He felt terrible. Bless his heart. I am so happy with this. 
something a little over here, but this side I absolutely love, but I think when I ink it up, we'll be okay. Um, he had run over her. And, uh, I, I was just going, normally I let nature take its course with the turtles. If, if they have a, you know, I've had people bring me turtles that had a cracked shell or whatever, and they were bleeding. I usually just leave it and, and turn them loose in my yard because, you know, I have all kinds of turtle pools. And, you know, they usually do fine. I see them again the next year, and they have pulled out of it, and their crack is now a chip, and, and they do fine. So, I was just going to leave baby alone and let her see. I looked it up on the internet. It said, actually, they, they can regenerate their shell. I don't know if the whole top of it would grow back, but it said they could regenerate their shell. So, I decided to leave her alone. Well, about two days later, I'm out in the backyard hanging clothes on the clothesline. And here comes Baby walking back there with her shell off. And now I'm seeing flies all over the top. And I'm like, well, I got to do something because those flies are going to lay eggs. Those eggs are going to become maggots and it's going to kill her. Drying. So, I went in the house and I gently ran her under some water, took some tweezers, picked the little weeds and sticks like stuff out of her injury, and uh, and I just caked it with triple antibiotic ointment, which I think is the generic way to say Neosporin, and I just caked it in the wound. And I took a non-stick gauze pad and I laid it over the wound. And then I covered her whole shell with white athletic tape. Why, sure I have athletic tape. I use it in my art journals. <laughs> so that was handy. So I used that and I just coated the whole back of her shell with that. Because I wanted to keep the flies out. So I did that and I set her free and prayed over her and said, Lord, it's your creature. You know, if she makes it, praise God. I really didn't think she would. I mean, literally, when she breathed or moved, you could see the meat move where the shell was gone. It was that, it was that bad. So, and, and the hole on her shell, her shell is about this big and the hole was about this big. So, I did put her back where she came to get me for help at the clothesline and we continued on. Well, it was about two weeks and I, I kept telling Terry when he mowed, watch for her because, you know, I don't want you to run over her dead shell again. Well, two weeks pass and here she is back up under my husband's truck again with her little shell. It's a little dirty on her bandage, but there she is. So I took her and cleaned her bandage off. Took her bandage off. Redressed it. Put some more triple antibiotic on. Redressed it. It looked wonderful inside. Nice and pink. It wasn't bloody anymore. It was just looking nice. Like it was on the mend. Two more weeks go by. I see her out in the liriope bed, hiding in the hot sun. They, they always go in somewhere where there's shade for the heat of the day and come out in the morning and at night. Um, there she is again. So I did the same thing again. I cleaned her off again. A couple weeks go by, no baby. Don't see her anywhere. The second time I'm thinking... I actually think the shell is starting to close in. <clears throat> well, 
well, the two more weeks go by and I don't see her anywhere and I'm worrying about her. Okay. So, um, I'm saying, Lord, please take care of baby. You know, I'm praying, but I felt like now hindsight's 2020 when she was being brought to my mind, was it God with his Holy Spirit saying, go search for baby go search for baby because she really was on my heart and I would look for her everywhere on my way out to the shop and back or on my way out to the goats and back. I wasn't really looking for her just where I was going. You know, when I'd walk, I'd watch for her. She was just really on my heart. And then one day I was out in the front yard pulling weeds and I have a rock border around my flower bed in the front. And what she had done was come out of the flower bed and fallen off the rock border and had gotten tipped over upside down. And since her shell is, you know, has no roundness because it's got that missing part, she fell on and it made a flat divot and she couldn't get turned back over. She was freshly dead. So if I would have, if God would have smacked me and talked to me in a different tone of voice other than my own, I would have listened and gone and looked for her just days before while I'm thinking of her. She's laying there suffering, thinking, birdie, birdie, come tip me over. God, it just made me sick. I mean, I lay in bed and think of this. She was out there wishing I would help her and I wasn't there. And I also say, God, why are you not in a different tone of voice? Why are you my voice? I know that was him prodding me and I didn't listen because I think it's me just thinking of a turtle. So anyway, that's what I dealt with last week. I went ahead and took her little bandage off, checked her again after she had passed. I know I'm sick, but whatever. It looked great under there. I mean, I think had she not tipped over and not been able to get back up, she would have made it through this. So, sick person that I am, I love wildlife. I took her little body over, laid it up on top of a tractor in the backyard that just sits in the tree row in the shade, and I'm going to let her decompose, and I'm going to keep her shell. I have five or six other turtle shells that my husband has brought home from work that he's found out in the Flint Hills, everywhere from great big ones to little ones. And I'm going to put baby amongst those as a memory of her. I know, I know you're thinking your girlfriend really does need therapy now. But listen, I just love, I love wildlife to this point where I'm going to save her little carcass. Anyway, I just finished... And I, I like it. And I think I've kept you guys long enough. I think I'm going to find some stickles. Or whatever you call them. They're not stickles, but I call them that. Just a minute. One of those things that shows I just have too much. Is that I have these little bottles of this shiny. You know, it's stickles is what they are. Only they're probably the off version. I have all kinds of these little bottles of them that you squeeze little droplets onto your, that I never use, that I thought I need to use these up, and danged if I don't know where they are. Now, if, if I were organized, they would be with these little, whatever these are that I have for the kids. So I'm stubborn enough that I want them bad enough, I'm going to use this kid's glue. <sighs> Maybe not. Maybe I will not because I can't get it out. I just want some little dots on here. I don't even know if I can do it. And, um, and I'm going to sprinkle some. I don't know that it's going to be adequate glitter for, for me. It's going to stick. I know it is. I really think it will. Am I going to stop? No, I'm going to continue on. Okay. 
and I don't know why, but I feel like it needs more glitter. So I'm going to cake, maybe this will keep it from sticking. I'm going to cake it with this stuff. Maybe that'll keep it from being too sticky. Okay. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to get it back into this little vial. <laughs> I just make things hard for myself. But you know what? It's just an adventure. It, it makes me giggle at myself because I do the craziest things that I just have to laugh at myself. And my husband, nothing, nothing surprises him. So yes, it's caked on there, but I will dump it off later. And I'm going to say my little sentiment on there. And there we go, you guys. You just made a, a thank you card with me. Isn't this little turtle cute? He just so cute. I don't even want to go. I just want to sit here and talk. 41 minutes to make a card. I'm sorry, you guys. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye from Birdie.